is a beautiful afternoon here in Taipei. It's like one o'clock. I'm going for a little cheeky jog. So today I thought I would briefly talk about mileage versus time. During your training, whether you're counting your total mileage for the day or for the week, or if you're counting it in time. The pros and cons of my experience with it. But I'm just starting out, so I'm gonna go for a little warm up and... But it's, uh, it's a little noisy here, so let's, let's do it at the park. Oh, oh my God. So I've been running for like 20 minutes at the park. Oh, that's right, I said, running, not swimming. This is just like, oh, gross. Southeast Asia summertime humidity has begun. It feels like if you took like one of those electric blankets, dipped it in water, turned it on, and then like walked out into the summertime heat, you're just, just always wet. You're, you're never not sweating and your sweat doesn't evaporate, which is the worst thing. Speaking of, I'm gonna start now because if I let the sweat roll down, it goes into my socks and you get squishy shoes and... Okay, okay, so mileage versus time. Counting mileage versus counting time. So I was looking at my training and the New York City Marathon's about six months away and I've been doing about 50 miles a week of running. I've been trying to get in like an hour's worth of running every day. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. But for me, if I want to crack 240, if I'm gonna dip under 240, 50 miles a week of running really isn't enough. I need to be doing more like 80, 90, 100 miles a week. And thankfully, because of my training background, I can bump it up to that pretty soon. Like within like two months, I could be at 80 or 90 miles a week, not a big deal. But obviously I recognize that not everyone's at that level right now. So I was thinking about what I had to do when I was increasing my mileage for like the first time ever, going from lower mileage, like 40, 50 miles a week, and going into these kind of like unexplored territories, going up and up and up. And I remember that whenever I would count mileage, trying to gradually increase my weekly mileage, I would end up getting injured because I was like so focused on the number, like I have to get 10 miles today or else. I would end up kind of pushing myself when I didn't need to be. Increasing mileage shouldn't be something that's terribly strenuous. Increasing mileage will be an increase in difficulty, but it shouldn't be like something that's painful or anything like that. And the fatigue is gonna be felt like throughout your body, not like any sharp pains. There shouldn't be any sharp pains or anything. I remember coming across an article or a page from a book from Dr. Jack Daniels' training book, his running book. He basically said, hey, counting time might be more appropriate depending on your level. Because depending on how fit you are, how fast you are, you'll cover more or less distance in a given time frame. So right now I'm running about eight miles. Let's say it takes me an hour. It'll take an elite or sub-elite runner maybe 48 minutes, 50 minutes to cover that same distance at the same intensity because they are quicker, they're, they're, more, they're more fit, they're more running fit. So right now I'm running at an easy pace. When an elite runner runs at an easy pace, they're running quite a bit quicker. And on the flip side, eight miles might take you an hour and a half, you know? And the problem with that time variation is that generally the more time on your feet, the more susceptible you are to injury. I don't know if there's any research to like specifically back that up. If there is, I'll put it right here. But generally speaking, if you're spending more time on your feet, that's more impacts per stride, more fluid loss, that's more muscle damage, more stress on the bone, more stress on the tendons. So the logic's saying that if you spend more time on your feet, you're more susceptible to injury. Kind of makes sense. I can buy that. I also came across some videos and stuff that supported that from elite runners. Speaking of mileage, like how, what is your weekly mileage? Okay, um, I usually don't count my weekly mileage, which is kind of unusual for a distance runner, but... I'm always reluctant to tell people how many miles a week to run. I don't even keep track of my mileage, except when I was writing in a journal heading into Boston last year, and even then I never added up the weekly mileage. So not everyone keeps track of mileage. It's very possible to keep track of your time. By the way, if you guys like that, if you like me finding out like specific info about what the elites do and stuff, let me know in the comments. So what I did, I would structure it like every day I want to run an hour. You know, I did that for a week, so that's six or seven hours of running, and that'll gradually increase the time. Okay, the next week I want to do six and a half hours of running. Two weeks later, I want to be able to do seven hours of running. And so you structure it like that. And then generally over time, just as you increase your mileage and you adapt to it, increase your time and adapt to it, you'll get faster. So so maybe after a few months, if you can check your time, you can calculate out and see, oh, I ran I ran 53 and a half miles last week. Cool. So, so tracking time instead of miles is good for two reasons. One, it takes into account your physical ability, and then also it can take into account your effort. So maybe I had a really hard workout the day before, and today I wanted to go for an hour's worth of running. Well, I might run a lot slower than normal, but I'll go out for 30 minutes and I'll come back for 30 minutes. So if I'm running slower, I'm gonna be covering less distance, but I'll still have the stress in the cardiovascular system, the heart, the lungs, and everything. There's still a training stimulus. So yeah, those are two big reasons that you might wanna try keeping track of your time versus your mileage. For me, I noticed that as I was doing that, when I was really focusing on time, and not mileage, my training was much more steady and it was much more successful. If there was a part of my leg that felt weird or kind of hurt, I didn't run fast. I ran very easy, very slow and on soft surfaces or whatever. And so it didn't get stressed as much as it would if I was like, oh my God, you know, I have to do 10 miles today and I was kind of rushing to put in the mileage. So just a consideration, try it out. You might really like it. It's, uh, it's easier, it might be a little easier on your body physically and also a little easier on you mentally. Just because you're not putting any stress on yourself to complete a certain 
mileage. But for me, I've already done like 100 mile weeks and I've done weeks where I've run for 10 hours and stuff. So I know what my body can handle more or less. So I just keep track of mileage now. But I'll always pay attention to time. You know, if I'm feeling particularly sluggish on a day, then I just won't even worry about miles and I'll just do time. For me, anything over 50 minutes for a day is like, it's good enough for my training at this point. Like I can mentally live with that because I have other things going on. So yeah, after you're comfortable with it and you kind of see how your body responds, you can vary. You can keep track of time, you can keep track of mileage, it's up to you. By the way, if you guys like this kind of info, if you like me finding stuff about the elites and kind of putting it in there, I always think this stuff's motivating and it provides really good perspective. So if you guys like it, let me know. Tell me in the comments and stuff. Yeah, so my marathon is in like six months. I really gotta up my training a bit. I've only, I've been doing like the bare minimum amount I need to maintain everything. Just like 50 miles a week, hours with the running every day ish. Um, I haven't really been doing workouts. I've been doing like little fire lake runs. So basically like throwing in little bursts of speed for a few minutes here and there a couple times a week, but nothing specific. I think this weekend I'm gonna have my first big workout or it's like a testing workout. I'll show you guys a cool way to just kind of see where your fitness is at by touching on a few different energy systems.